This week on Outdoor Bound TV, we return to the province of British Columbia, Canada for part two with Wisconsin hunter Martin Dagenhart and his guide, Mark Mackay. Last week, Marty harvested an incredible mountain grizzly bear, and now the duo will head back up the mountain for a chance at a trophy Canada moose. Then we head back to Bowen Lodge on Lake Winnebagosh in northern Minnesota for an afternoon of perch fishing with our friend, Bill High. Take a look at this. Yeah. That was intense. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Real Deal G2 Seeds. Brew Pub Pizza, Meyer Recreational Buildings, and Colby Chrysler Center. Two seeds. The results speak for themselves. Brew Pub Pizza is specifically designed with the hungry in mind. It's big, it's bold, and it's outrageously delicious. Brew Pub Lata Matza Pizza is made with your favorite premium meats and veggies topped with over a half pound of real Wisconsin mozzarella cheese. When you're looking for the ultimate pizza adventure, when you crave a really serious pizza that brings the great Brew Pub experience, this is the one. Pick it up today at your favorite local grocer. Brew Pub Lots of Matzo Pizza, the ingredients for a great time. Since 1957, Meyer Buildings has offered full design and project management for your farm, equestrian, commercial, and storage building needs. Our recreational building line specializes in the design and construction of affordable, remote area buildings for the outdoorsman. This is my second Meyer building. I've been satisfied both times. Their design assistance, the quality of the construction, and their attention to detail is perfect. At Meyer Recreational Buildings, we offer custom building solutions for all of your building needs. Log on today for a better way to build. The sun's out, and at Kobe Chrysler Center, we're going topless. Imagine the feel of wind in your hair as you cruise in your new Jeep Wrangler. Jeep Wrangler, the exceptional 4x4 whose capabilities breed unstoppable spirit. Join us for the Jeep Drive and Discover event and get great savings on a variety of new Jeep vehicles. One drive and you'll discover why Jeep brand is one of Kobe Chrysler Center's most popular choices. Welcome home to Kobe Chrysler. On last week's show, we traveled to the mountains of British Columbia, Canada for an early fall grizzly bear hunt with Martin Dagenhart of Fall Creek, Wisconsin and his friend and guide, Mark Mackay. After a few days of spotting bears from camp on the mountainside, the two made the climb up the opposite slope and was able to tag a fantastic trophy grizzly bear, but not after a few anxious moments along the way. Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm Kurt Walbeck. Now after a couple days of packing out their bear and drying and fleshing the hide, it's time for the duo to head back up the mountain. Martin also has a moose tag in his pocket and they hope to score big on a big old British Columbia bull. So let's head back to Northern British Columbia right now. So now, grizzly bear's done, now it's time to go moose hunting. And we've been seeing moose on and off. We've seen them from camp. There are those cows and calves that have been coming down and, and coming into the lake and feeding. And we also seen them on the, in that river bottom area um, where we've been canoeing up and down going after the grizzly. Well, here we are. We're just going to head up the river here looking for a, uh, a moose for Marty. It's the 14th, I think, and uh, officially the rut starts tomorrow, but we've seen a few bulls running around with cows. The strategy and the process was altogether different of hunting these moose. What we do, we paddle up and we had a spike camp that we had set up uh, further upriver. 
and we'd uh, spike up there, then we'd climb up on the south side to glass across to the other side. And uh, so most of our days were just spent sitting in the sun, glassing the other side. The weather had warmed up, the moose weren't moving as much as, uh, you know, the weather might push them a little better, but uh, it was what it was and we just had to deal with it. Well, here we are at a little spike camp, if you can call it that, just a tent on the side of a mountain. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. Marty's just finishing breakfast there, which consists of uh, a couple of packets of instant oatmeal in a cup. And that should be enough to get him right up on top of that burn there. We've seen a couple of nice bulls up there, right up on in that dark green tree line there. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a hike and if he does all right it's a hell of a haul out but it is what it is. Cheers. Yeah, here's to a good day on the hill and hopefully it's a successful one. You know it's three days left before the end of the hunt and uh, up we go. Um, you know, it's a half a day climb to get up there almost. We started, you know, before first light and got up there fairly early yet and walked through and we're calling and got nothing. So the plan was to climb up above the moose and uh, in, this, in this bowl that we knew they were hanging out in and just to hang out there and see if we get them to, to show themselves. We know that there's two bulls, two shooter bulls in this bowl. One's bigger than the other. In fact, you see, he's really an exceptional bull, but we know that there's two bulls in this bowl. So the plan is to try to get up above and, um, and uh, just wait them out. Hopefully one or both would show themselves. Saw these bulls here last night. And we just snuck up the hole here. Not too much of a sneak, but we got, got here and we're above them now, so. Uh... And we no sooner got there, Mark saw this bull. And he was just hanging out there not going anywhere so the plan was at that moment then to just watch him probably yet towards the end of the day he was going to get up and start to feed and we we're hoping the other bull would show himself somewhere at, at that point also we see the smaller one which is still a really nice bull but we see the smaller one there sitting on the outside of the brush. So we know the bigger one's in there somewhere. And uh, the idea would be just to sit him out now and uh, see if we can get a, a look at the big one. So we're sitting up on this rock shelf and the black flies were so bad. I was wearing my face mask, not for camouflage, but try to just try to keep the flies off of my face. I've never had flies like that in all my years fishing in Canada or hunting out west or around here that I've had bugs that bad. And about three o'clock, the smaller bull stands up and starts to feed. And it just looked like he was carrying two refrigerator doors as he walked through and it just, you, you know, you could tell that he was boss. So this bull stands up and he starts to feed away from us and we're going to lose sight of him in, in a short distance. It's 50 yards, it's 20 yards and uh, I'm looking around and I keep looking back and the other bull's not showing himself. So it's time. The 
is as good as anywhere if you want them. I can kill him right here. Well, that's that's your shot right there, isn't it? All right. If you want him, he's yours. Okay. I'm gonna take him. Okay. He just killed his yes. bull, and a good one it is. Looks like a dandy's got really long eye guards. We've been sitting here on this rock all morning watching them. We spotted them yesterday from way across the valley. Yeah, one shot, and there he lays. Nice bull, really nice bull. So the bull's 230 yards out, and I touch one off, and he takes three, four steps and piles up. It's just a nice, clean, quick kill and I got my bull, I got my grizzly. What an awesome hunt this has been. Yeah, we saw this guy day before yesterday down at the bottom, but we waited for him to climb all the way to the top before we come up here and kill him. <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> But uh, we spotted him yesterday up top here from the rock pile down below across the river and uh, snuck up, didn't really sneak. It was pretty loud, crunchy, noisy, tough going up to the top of the, the mountain here and um, got in the middle of where we thought he would be and, and uh, didn't see him. So we climbed the uh, pile of rocks back behind us and, and Mark spotted him right off. And so we sat and watched him and watched him and he was just bedded up laying there. And suddenly for whatever reason, he got up and started to to move on out, so um, I put the shot on him, and, and here we are. Now the fun begins. We got lots of bugs here today, and that, and uh, a lot of work to get him out of here. But it's going to be well worth the while, and uh, get him down to the bottom. And this was day and a half from the end of the hunt, so pretty nice to put this on the ground right now. And a good day it's going to be. And now the reality kind of sets in. You know, we walk for more than two hours to get up the mountain. We got a couple hours paddling to get back to camp without any meat. We're on our second day now of hauling this meat down the mountain. Can't put it on your back. You can't stay on your feet in this, in this crap. This is about the easiest way of doing it up here. So. There was times during this two-day pack up, I'm telling you, I don't think I had the energy to swat the flies off of my face, much less grab a hold of a quarter and drag it another two steps back. But we managed, we fought through it, and uh, you know, going walking back up that second day, knowing the chore that we had in front of us wasn't really the most <laughs> appealing thing, but i uh, tell you what, that moose meat is the best red meat I've ever eaten in my life, and I'd go right back again and do it. This is the end of shuttle three. <laughs> got a few to go yet. We got a little ways to go yet. We got to get down the bottom there to the river and we got the canoe from there. And dog's got no pack today so he's just having a blast. When you know going in that you're going to be in there for most of a month, you just have a different feeling. You don't have that rush and that urgency that you got to get something done today because to, you know tomorrow's the end of it. I didn't have that feeling the entire time. It's just relaxing and fun, and um, you know I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Mission, HHA Sports, Big Bear Down and Bowen Lodge. I'm gonna be just like my dad. Strong like him, smart like him, and now that I have my mission menace, I'm gonna be a bow hunter just like he is. This bow is my beginning, my future. This is my mission. Featuring an advanced perimeter weighted dual cam system, the Mission Menace provides power for the hunt and adjustability to fit any beginner, young or old. Visit missionarchery.com to find an authorized retailer near you. Mission by Matthews. Optimizer by HHA Sports. The Optimizer Light Ultra, voted number one single pin adjustable sight for 10 years running. 
the optimizer speed dial for crossbows, to the yard accuracy with a single reticle, and the optimizer horizon, offering unmatched accuracy from both short and long range firearms. All optimizer sight systems utilize range dial shoot technology. Ask for optimizer at a dealer near you. Big Bear Down. Whether you're looking for a sweet recipe for bear bait or quality bear scents, we've got you covered. Big Bear Down offers all their bait selections by the bag, the barrel, or in bulk. From crushed sugar cones, trail mix, and granola to our syrups, frostings, and bait toppings, we've got the variety to keep the most cautious bears coming back again and again. Big Bear Down scents can be used as an attractant or cover scent and draws bears in from miles around. Look for Big Bear Down by our distributing at two convenient Wisconsin locations or at a retailer near you. I'm Rita Otel with Wings and Walleye's Guide Service. A lot of people ask me how I catch fish day in and day out on these hot, calm days, and that is moving very slow. Whether I'm on a sand point or a mid-lake hump, jigging or rigging, I put my boat at 0.2 to 0.4 miles an hour, and I move really slow to get them fish to bite. For more great fishing tips, log on to bowandlodge.com. Last season, we received a record number of photos that you shared with us of animals that you harvested and fish that you caught. And we gave away some great prizes just for submitting your photos to the show. Well, this season, the prizes are even bigger and even better. And all you have to do to be eligible to win is email us your photo or share it with us on Facebook or Twitter. Prizes include an assortment of plastic baits from Woodcraft Lures, a Yeti cooler from Petrix Service Station, Fish Taxidermy Services from Mike Liga Taxidermy. A trip for two aboard the Grand Illusion 2 charter boat on Lake Michigan. And this year's grand prize, a four-day, three-night fishing vacation at Sunset Cove Resort on Lake of the Woods, Ontario. And remember, you can't win if you don't submit your photo. Here are this week's Outdoor Bound TV viewer photos. Hey everyone, today we're on Lake Winnebagosh in northern Minnesota. I'm fishing with my good friend Bill Hyde from Bowens Lodge, and we're doing something a little bit different today. Now, Lake Winnebagosh is known primarily for great walleye fishing, but it's also a great destination for things like perch and muskie and northern pike. So today, Bill and I said, you know, let's do something a little bit different. We're on a sand flat here in the middle of the lake, and it's scattered with sporadic weeds, and what we're fishing for is some of these beautiful perch here on Lake Winnebagosh. Now, I love to catch every species of fish, but my favorite is perch. So when Bill said, let's go catch some perch today, I was right on board. Isn't it fun watching them come up with these oh, polarized glasses? Great. You can look right down and see all the fish. Another nice perch. Look at the, look at the light. I, what I lo really love is that the orange uh, gills on the bottom, I mean, I just, they're just beautiful fish. There's a nice one. This one's pulling a little more here. I almost think this is a northern or a walleye. It is a northern. Well, cool, That you know, that's what's cool about this kind of fishing. You never know what species you're gonna get. No, I think that's a walleye. It's a wally. Yeah, that's a it's wally. a nice wally. Um, wally time here. I'll get the net, Kurt. Okay. Nice fish, these are healthy fish. Look at that, oh, yeah. isn't that Beautiful a beauty? Fish. Yep, wow. absolutely. Gorgeous walleye. Well, that's one of the bonuses you get when you're out here on Lake Winnebagosh. Now we're fishing perch today, but occasionally you tie in some really nice eater walleyes and boy, what a beautiful fish. <laughs> How big do you think he is, Bill? Well, I think he's in that 17 range, and uh, and did you notice how they fight and how healthy they are? They're they are. just really beautiful, beautiful fish. Beautiful fish, yeah. yeah. Absolutely gorgeous fish. Yeah. 17. I nailed him right on the money, didn't I? <laughs> Found some fish here, Bill. 
This one's might look at them all coming. That's what we're looking for That's right there. That's a nice fish. It's a nice yeah. fish. Beautiful. Oh. Nice winnie perch. You know, everyone thinks, you know, jumbos. Well, jumbos are hard to find. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not easy, but there's a typical, and I call these fish sandwiches. I look at that and I think of tartar sauce and lettuce and a tomato on a hoagie bun. And I go, I go, just, I go, you know, we get much better than that. That's a fish sandwich right yeah. there. <laughs> Now what I'm using for a combination today is an ultralight spinning rod with four pound test monofilament. I really like to feel the bite on these perch and we're tipping it with just an eighth ounce or even a sixteenth ounce jig and a minnow. And uh, we're just slowly moving across the sand flat and just jigging ever so slightly, just like you would for walleyes, the only thing we're after, these big perch. Look at this, a double with another 50 following it up. <laughs> they are certainly down there, aren't they? You can see them. Okay, here we go. Here's a double. <laughs> we lost our bigger fish, it looks like. Yeah, we're into a school with some smaller ones now. But you know what they say. Where the small ones are? Yeah. I just rank this kind of fishing right up there with any kind. I just think this is a kick. Especially when you get into the kind of the next age class up, you know, um, and and you get into plenty of them. Well, what's so fun about perch fishing, and, and especially like this where we're in 10 feet of water, you don't need to use anything special for equipment. I mean, we're just using some lightweight ultra, ultra light rods and reels with four pound tests, but frankly, you could be catching them with a cane pole off the side mm -hmm. of the boat. And that's what's so neat about this style of fishing is uh, once you find them, it really doesn't matter what you have for equipment. I just like- Look at them all, look, look, at, them. look at the huge school of fish following them. Look, look at, at that. that, look at that. And they're all taking swipes at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can take advantage of all of them you following know, yours. So interesting, right here. Look at that. Look, look at you know the big, the littler ones get get the jig first. They're more yep. aggressive, and the bigger ones kind of are following it. And uh, pick which one you want, Kurt. Look at that. You can literally sight fish them right over the edge of the boat. <laughs> You know, it's funny, Bill has a, has a perch on and about 25 to 30 other perch follow it right up. And uh, I lost my fish, so I dropped my jig back down over the side and there's probably 10 or 12 perch all fighting over it. Now, this one's not a keeper, but it's just incredible to see that many fish come in after the jig. Only on Lake Winnie. You know, folks, that's one of the advantages of fishing here in Lake Winnebagosh in northern Minnesota. In many areas of the country right now, and especially here in the Midwest, perch fishing is really on a steady decline. Uh, in fact, many of the famous perch fishing bodies of water today, uh, you can't even keep a perch on it or even catch a perch. But uh, that's one of the advantages here in Lake Winnebagosh. There's a very healthy population of perch. Uh, as you can see, there's no shortage of them. In fact, they're biting like crazy. And this is not an optimum day. We're in the month of June. It's absolutely gorgeous weather. It's probably 75, 78 degrees today. Uh, there is no wind. The water is flat. So this is not the type of conditions you'd normally associate with great fishing. But uh, we're just up on a sand flat here and there's some sporadic weeds and <laughs> the bill keeps pulling. Okay. I got one hooked. I'll bring a school over to you here. All Kurt. right, well, sounds good. Look at this, look at them all look coming. At them oh, come. look at them, Incredible, huh? incredible wow. fish. And as we're reeling these fish in, these perch are coming up and they're biting a traditional jig and minnow. And as we're reeling them into the boat, we're getting 20 or 30 other fish that'll actually follow them in. And uh, it's just really kind of a neat sight to see. It's something you don't see very often. I don't think I've ever seen it. But I love to catch perch. So I'm absolutely in heaven here on Lake Winnebagosh. 
Ooh, there you go. That's a nice. There's a there, there's a nice one. Wow, nice. Good job, Kurt. You sight fished that one. Yeah, I sure did. Right over the side of the boat, and as you bring them close, uh, good tag team on this. Yeah, one. yeah. You bring them close, and <laughs> one brings them in, the other one picks which one they and want. I get to take advantage of it. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful perch here on Lake Winnebagosh. Good old fashioned fun. Isn't it though? Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Nays Baits, Golden Hawk Canoes, Value Implement, and Burrs Off. Nays Baits, durable, effective, unique. The must-have fishing lures for every musky angler. Crank it, rip it, fast or slow. Our flagship livid fish brings them in again and again. Put trophy musky in your boat with naze baits. Go topwater with our tin head. From deadly slow to an all-out sprint. Naze baits. Get it done. Check us out online or pick up naze baits at a retailer near you. Handcrafted in the heart of Wisconsin since 1968, Golden Hawk canoes are inspired by the tradition of early wilderness explorers and modern day canoeing know-how. Customized to meet your exact needs with precision, uniformity, and strength. Our unique, full contour hull design contributes to stability, whether you're hunting, fishing, trapping, or just spending an afternoon on the water. Handcrafted fun and satisfaction for a lifetime. Golden Hawk Canoe. Value Implements serves all of West Central Wisconsin and knows more stores plus more selection equals more value. And value means providing our customers with a wide variety of quality Kubota products. Value means providing outstanding Kubota product knowledge and customer service. Value means providing the largest selection of Kubota products at six convenient locations. Value Implement. More stores. More selection. More value. Product and promotional consideration provided for Outdoor Bound TV by these fine sponsors. Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in. And hopefully you'll join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the Midwest, around the nation, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. So, so uh, into August. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So here we sit, wanting to eat. Yeah, I mean, you know, I missed something there. Um, so we spotted this. Am I trying to go too fast, maybe? Hi, I'm Martin Dagenhart from Fall Creek, Wisconsin. Outdoor bound teal. Done? Done. Yeah. Breakfast in the mountains. Breakfast in the laundromat. <laughs>